welcome to the Gifted Home Channel. My name is Cinda Baxter. I'm owner of Details, Inc. in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the fine stationery and invitations boutique. And this segment is titled Reaching Out, Community Events. We all have heard about sponsorships, everything from softball games to cars and parades. It used to be the case that you could very inexpensively go in and maybe sponsor your local softball team and get some traction from that. What's happened over time is that's become less and less effective for most independent retailers. And to be honest, most of us don't have the cash flow that would really be required to do it and do it well. In my particular case, sponsoring something like a, a softball game would make no sense. Literally, I'm selling a product that most of the customers in the stands aren't probably looking to buy in the near future. So what we need to do is look at a way to work with community events so that we can get our name out, create the goodwill, stay on budget but not get into a position where we're really preaching to the wrong choir, so to speak. Visibility is key no matter what you do, so you always want to remember to keep the look cohesive, keep your brand in front of all your customers or in front of your audience, and stay on track. Now, silent auctions are something most of us are familiar with, simply because we're approached so frequently to donate something. I know one way that we approach it is we figure out over the course of a year how many silent auctions we think we'd like to donate something to, and maybe I'll go to a, to a vendor and say, okay, this item would be a good donation. Let's buy a dozen of them, specifically with that in mind. Typically, you want to pick something out that's going to be appealing to the people who are there, as well as reflect what your store is about. So, for instance, while we carry Kate Spade stationery here in the store, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to use a Kate Spade handbag as a donation item. Odds are anyone who's at the event is going to think we sell handbags. And next thing you know, somebody walks in the store and is disappointed. You want to think about offering your store up as a possible event site. There may be small groups that would work well for. I have a friend in the Los Angeles area who has a lot of square footage that she can entertain in fairly easily. And for that reason, she's offered it to a couple of nonprofits who are able to come in after hours and have private events as fundraisers. It works well for the event because they don't have to pay any overhead on a space. At the same time, it works well for my friend because she now has an entire crowd of people in the store looking at her product and in many cases is being introduced for the first time to brand new potential customers. You want to think about doing things after hours, especially if you're going to do some kind of a special sale. There are a couple of different things that we do where literally it starts five minutes after closing. It's something that's invitation only, it's not open to the public, which tends to bring the buzz level up just a little bit. If somebody knows that they're coming in and the door's going to be locked behind them and that they're going to be at part of a private event, that builds the anticipation a little bit. We bring in wine, we'll bring in champagne, we'll bring in hors d'oeuvres. Another thing that's not typically allowed here in the store, because at a paper store, everything's a big sponge. You don't want to have a lot of food and beverage sitting around. This is the one time that we break the rules and the customers that come know it and they're happy to be part of it. You want to also think about what you can do around the holiday season. One of the things that we launched several years ago is called Giving Greetings, and it's a program that specifically is built to help nonprofits raise funds. We came about the idea because shortly before Katrina, we were already starting to see rumblings of some of the larger corporations cut back on their charitable giving. After Katrina, we saw a lot of stress in the system. Charitable giving had been cut back, and suddenly we had a nation that was in desperate need of it. So what we did was created a program where customers are invited to pick a week, any week they want, between November 1st and about December 15th. Some years we bump it earlier to October, kind of depends on where everything is. They choose a week and then they tell their friends about the week and anyone who comes in and places an order for personalized holiday cards during that week, 10% of that purchase price is donated to the charity that was chosen by the customer who chose the week. It's basically setting up their own private fundraiser. We provide all the invitations that they can send out, as well as a digital version they can send by email if they prefer. We have a little book we keep track of which donations are going to which charities, and we can be running as many as a half a dozen charities at a time. It's amazing how much you can save your customers in terms of hassle factor as they're trying to figure out what to send at the same time that you're building cash for somebody who really needs it. It's a lot of goodwill and very, very little difficulty on the part of the store. Now, as you're being generous to everyone around you through silent auctions and, and other donations that you may choose to make throughout the year, you need to remember this is part of your annual budget. You can't suddenly go willy-nilly donating to every single thing and then come December you're closing your books and finding out, whoa, what did we just do here? So what we did was we came up with a system 
that works beautifully, it keeps it under control, and really has everybody feeling pretty happy. We've got a form that we put together that we give anyone who comes in requesting a charitable donation, whether it's cash or it's a donation for a silent auction. We ask them to fill out the form, which includes their nonprofit registration number issued through the state, not federal, but state. Contact person, contact information, a brief description of what the event is, a very thorough description of what the group holding the event is about, and an idea of what percentage of donations are actually going to non-administrative costs. We take all of those throughout the course of the year and put them in a folder. And then the last week in December, sit down at the table with a calculator, a calendar, and a glass of wine and chart out what we're going to donate as we go through the year. Now the downside is that the first year you try this, you're going to have to come up with kind of a combo system where there are going to be some that you know you're going to need to donate right away rather than make everybody wait until the following calendar year. But for events that are annual, this works really well. The one rule being that as long as they continue asking us, will you please continue to donate, they hold their spot on the calendar and don't lose it. If, however, one year they decide not to stay in touch with us, with us, that spot opens back up. We go back to our stack and say, okay, here's somebody else we can put in that spot, and then they own that spot until they drop the ball, if, for lack of a better term. It's great because it literally gives us a budget, and our line items we can see exactly at the end of the year where we are for charitable giving and my accountant doesn't call me with with uncomfortable questions about what the heck were you thinking so basically you want to think about the way to get your image out there in a real happy feel-good sort of way you want to do good for your community but you want to keep it on track so that you can continue doing it from year to year pull that together and you've got it again my name is Cinda Baxter I thank you for joining me for this segment next one will be paying attention is paying respect we're going to talk about staying in touch with your customers